Welcome back to another episode of Graphic Art. Guys, I'm Matt. I'm going to be showing you how to do bushes and foliage today on a new how-to series so you can make your very own spray paint art paintings. So stick around. All right, guys. So we're just going to get right into this. You're going to take your napkin. You're going to fold it in half in half again at a diagonal. And then you're going to rip that in the shape of a fan brush or kind of like an ice cream cone. Just like that. No frills or anything. We're going to jump right into it. Right here you see we're doing some bushes, just single color. This is, we're going to go more in depth in a little bit. I'm just showing you the simplest of the technique. All you do is you dip it in and then you just start going in a clockwise motion. As you let it fade out you can get lighter tones. So you can do your foreground first and then as it fades out you can go into the background with that lighter shade and add in some little things here and there as you please. And just bear in mind guys, if you're right-handed, it's counterclockwise. So next I'm going to show you guys how to do some evergreen type trees without using a sponge. Uh, we're using regular bounty white napkins. You're just going to take a piece of scrap paper and just make some lines on your paper. This is where your trees are going to go. These are your guidelines for your tree. <clears throat> now we're going to just go again, single color, just going to use plain gloss black. We're going to fold the napkin again, you're going to fold it in half, and half again, and then at a diagonal. You're going to rip it into the shape of your fan brush, and you're going to see that the spine of the napkin is what I'm using towards the front, because that's the tighter section, so that's the area, you're, if you're right-handed, that spine should be facing inward toward the painting. Now when you start your tree, uh, you'll get a better angle in just a little bit, but instead of like acrylics or oil paint, we are starting from the bottom and working our way up. Because as that paint dries, the less and less is going to stick and it's going to fade your tree naturally to the top where the branches are thinner. So it's going to look like lights traveling through that sort of thing. And you'll see that it's a pretty simple technique, you're just going to zigzag across and fill in those zigzags and just taper it. Start thick at the bottom and work your way to the top. With a lot of practice, everything will start to look more and more like a tree and I, they'll, they'll look a little rough at first. I mean, it's, it's natural, but the more you practice with it, the better they will come out. Now over here we're going to work on some mixing in a color to get an actual colorful tree in there. So I'm going to use my favorite combination, which is a black and yellow. And when you mix the two together, they actually make a really nice green color. So you're going to fold your napkin again, half and half, add a diagonal, and make your nice, beautiful, cheap fan brush that you got from your local grocery store. Now when you dab it into the paint, you're going to start, you're going to dip that bottom part into the black and roll towards the yellow. You can see how it's only black on the bottom and yellow on top. <coughs> Excuse me. As you start to paint, those colors will naturally mix together. So you're going to start from the bottom again, work your way up, and you can see how the yellow shows up in some spots and then the darker areas, some spots. Now if you notice your trees are coming out too dark, you can dab more yellow in there. Or if they're coming out too light, you could dab in more black. You could go over your trees quite a few times before they start to look like a mess. Uh, try to do it as few times as possible and that once you get the hang of it and they start to look like trees, uh, you know, the fewer times you do it, the nicer, the crisper they're going to look. And now that we have a little background area to work with, we're going to start again with the bushes. Uh, we're going to use three colors. I recommend only three colors. If you do more than three colors, it, it turns into a big blob of mud. You really don't see all the different colors. and The napkin's not big enough to hold that many different colors without just making a mess. So I recommend three. My favorite combination uh, for a green type of fern type bush is black, yellow, and white. You always want a dark, a mid-tone, and then a highlight color. And that will give you the best possible outcome. So I'm going to show you here in just a second how this all rolls together. There we go. And you're going to start in the black and you're going to roll to the right and into the white. And you'll see on the brush that there's black, yellow, and white and they're just barely mixed. And then you're going to go in that same clockwise fashion. And you're mostly tapping with the top right. You're using that finger there to vary your pressure. The more pressure you press, uh, the more paint's going to come off that, off that napkin. So 
you can vary how light or dark you want them based on how much paint's on there, how dry it is, but how much pressure you press down. And you're going to see these show up a lot better on these black trees over here. And that's another very important thing with spray paint. If you're not using Montana or even Rust-Oleum, Rust-Oleum has a lot of pigment in it. I use a uh, Krylon Industrial and they are very transparent. Uh, the colors are very transparent. The only opaque, really truly opaque ones are the white and the black. So you always want a dark background if you're using a transparent type paint. Um, to get those colors to really show up. You'll see in a second when I go back over to the white that there, you can't really tell what's going on with them. So you always want to have a dark to bring out those really bright lights. And that's pretty much it to just making uh, your standard evergreen trees and some bushes. And this next section uh, you're going to see that uh, we're, I'm going to show you how you can fill in a lot of space really quick by using two napkins and two colors. And you see how I'm starting with that dark background so you can see uh, how everything's going to come up. And yes, I'm not wearing my mask. I left it in the truck. It's all right. I got some good ventilation. I'm... But you see the two napkins there. You're going to fold them in half. Fold them in half again. At the diagonal. That's a little harder to rip, so it's not on camera. But you get the idea. You're going to rip that into your fan brush. <clears throat> And then we're going to use the same two colors, but at uh, this time, your bright color. You want to get a lot of that in there. You want a lot. You'll see that even what I just did was not enough. And I'm going to go back in and dab it in. There we go. Just filled it up. And you can see you get these nice, big, fluffy bushes. And you see how I'm not going all the way up to where the light part is? I'm using those dark areas to really show the different transitions and by the time I got to the white, it's 103 out here, so it was already dry, so it came out a little sloppy, but you get the idea. If you want to throw some highlights in there, you just do a quick dab in white and plop it on. Hey guys, I hope that video was able to help you all out. If you have any questions or need any more pointers, make sure you do leave them in the comments below. I'm going to be leaving more tutorial videos on everything spray paint art and eventually showing you all how each and every one of my paintings are made. I'm going to try to get this at one video a week, so make sure you do like and subscribe so you can stay up to date. Also, if you would like me to check out some of your work, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Graphic Arts, and I'll be more than happy to leave you some comments or just to see what you guys are doing and see how creative everyone else is out there. Until then, guys, I'm Matt with Graphic Arts.